Dave, you were in uh, D.C. over the weekend. How did that all go for you? Um, it was a nice enough trip. Had a good time. with uh, Got together with the old Friday Night Lights gang that I used to hang out with when we were on WJFK. So had a good time there. Driving back home in the rental car, mm -hmm. not the best of times. No. No, I got lost. Yeah, Fez calls me. Well, first of all, and Dave will uh, back me up on this. Come on in here, uh, Dave. So, Fez, uh, you have a little bit of uh, a bridge thing where you don't like bridges. I despise bridges. I have the biggest bridge phobia. I can't describe the feeling I get on a bridge. Yeah, you just don't like bridges. Uh, he gets a tad nervous around them. So he calls. Uh, we're in here the other day, and then uh, Fez brings up, how big is this? How many bridges do I have to get over? And I go, you only got to go over one. Uh, but it's a decent-sized bridge. You know, you're at the Delaware Memorial Bridge. It's a, a large bridge. I go, you could probably go up an exit to the Commodore Barry. It's a little bit smaller, but it's thinner. You're like, no, 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 I'll just take the first one. And then you bring up a bridge which you claim is the most feared bridge in the world. The Benjamin Franklin Bridge in uh, Philadelphia is the number one scariest bridge in the world. I'm almost positive there's a stat. It's the number one bridge where people just stop their cars on the bridge because they're too frightened to drive over it. So he brings that up, and that's got Fez into a panic. And I go, shut up, Dave. Fez, don't listen to him. You're no worry but close to that bridge. For whatever reason, Fez calls me uh, as soon as, he's, as he says, I am down off the bridge, and I've done it. And I'm like, great, good. He goes, but there's bridges all over here. I go, no, there's not. There's just the one bridge. Everywhere I look, I see a bridge. He does it. He's lost. He's driving through the city of Philadelphia, and the next thing he sees is the sign for the bridge that's, oh. that you claim more people just get out and abandon cars and drive over. The right. Ben Franklin Bridge. I see the sign for it, and I see this ominous bridge uh, coming up on my side. And to me, that's just a regular bridge. What's going to be no. so scary for you? No, no, no. The lanes, I believe, are smaller than uh, no, normal bridges. Oh, if yeah. you drive over the GW, the lanes are bigger. Yeah. The Ben Franklin Bridge, the lanes are tiny. Accidents galore, and people just are totally scared to go over that. I don't I, know how you made it over. You know, good good point. With the older bridges, they do, you know, you can have some small lane bridges, but I don't think it's all that high compared to a lot of bridges. Well, it's got its height, though. I think it, it has its height uh, decently enough. Are you gonna, are you going to compare it with Golden Gate? Are you going that uh, type of deal? I, I just, I know that this is something I mean, that I it's learned. it's far from one of the, the world's most famous bridges. I know. That's let alone what... <laughs> the bridge people get out and walk out on. So to get back to the gist of the story, Fez decides to make this drive from D.C. to New York that he's never uh, taken before without once checking a map, without realizing, what did you have it in your pinhead that it's just 95? Yeah, that's exactly what I had in my head, that you just go up 95, and eventually that hooks up with the Jersey Turnpike, and I get into <laughs> New York through the Lincoln Tunnel. I just... I don't know why I just you, assumed this. You thought 95 just ran out there and you would be fine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not even of, like, bad planning Yeah. or I thought this would be a faster way to go. I mean, it's zero thinking whatsoever. It's total just assumption. Now, uh, Dave, do you remember this when I said to him, look, uh, if you want, I can look at a map because I know he was worried about bridge. Yeah. Maybe we can get you up to, like, the Delaware Water Gap or something. You cross over with the Delaware Mall. No, 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 don't worry. He he's doesn't yeah. think to himself, I need to maybe glance at a map for a trip I've never taken in my life. I mean, all I thought about really with the drive back was that bridge. You told me I would have to go over a bridge. Right. And you told me the Delaware Memorial Bridge had the widest lanes. Yeah. And that just sealed the uh, – yeah, my mind closed there. I go, widest lanes is perfect. Well, but why wouldn't you look for the sign, Delaware uh, Memorial Bridge, which you do see from 95? Yeah. Before I, you get to Wilmington. I must have just gone right past it. Yeah. With, you don't map quest or anything like that? You know that? what's weird? He map quests is everything. He map quests a trip to take in the subway. He map quests w walking trips. He always does. Did you map quest to get down there? No, I flew. Oh, that's You see, right. you really don't worry about directions other than get on the plane, <laughs> then get off the plane. I figured the pilot had that leg of the trip handled. Yeah, so that's normally fine. So, uh, for whatever reason, fucking Mr. Magoo decides just to be driving around. He takes a trip that should 
uh, go four hours, five if you've got a lot of Sunday traffic. He does it nine. Oh, no. Nine <laughs> hours That's driving around like Magoo. He's driving to Canada because <laughs> of that. When I talked to Ronnie and realized I was in the wrong place, you know, then I'm, like, trying to figure out how to get back to where I need to be. Yeah. Without going over another bridge. Right. But it's it's <laughs> double problem. Even if you're lost in Philly, how long does it take to find a way to get back to, to New York from Philly? That shouldn't yeah. take that long. Well, but he had a bridge to turn around and go over. Yeah. That bridge, I don't even know, uh, near the Navy Yard, that he drops you down a broad street right at the stadium. That bridge scared him, which... That's not a known scary bridge. There was, I was, like, I remember I was telling you, I keep seeing all these bridges. I hope I don't have to go over them, too. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going, no, nah, there's no bridges, because I think I knew. he's going over <laughs> the double I, I, I knew on Friday he was going to have to go over <laughs> the Ben Franklin Bridge. That's why I brought that thing up. I knew he was going to get lost and go over that bridge. When you said, where are you? Yeah. And I said, Philly. Yeah. And you, I don't even remember what the exact words were, but it was kind of like, what the fuck, you're not supposed to be in Philly. Yeah. And my heart just sank at that exact moment. I might as well have driven off the bridge because then it's like, all right, do I just stop now and get out of the car and start screaming for help? Now, this is now this is how bad my life is. After I hang up with them, I'm doing a thing of the, with the checkbook going, should I go get them? And then she's going, how are you going to get your car back? And I'm like, you're going to have to go with me, and you're going to have to follow me back here once I drive his truck for him. Because I don't want him driving around like uh, fucking Joe Mozzarella. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Well, that's totally what happened. And then you showed me a way. You told me a way to get b- yeah. to where I needed to go. Yeah. I got lost trying to find that way. What was that, like a Bristol Bridge or something yeah. like that? Oh, forget it. Yeah, the Bristol Bridge <laughs> in Once 276. You hit the Bris- forget I know what you're talking about. That Bristol Bridge gets you out into, like, Bumblefuck yeah. somewhere oh, it where did. it's just factories <laughs> and it's terrible. But, like, what is he doing over there? <laughs> yeah. You've got a huge turnpike that has rest stops and, and it's all laid out for you. There's no problem. There really are a lot of signs to yes. get you from Philly but you know back what? to the city. You've got to be aware. You just don't get in a car and just start looking, start driving and thinking, I'll see the Empire State Building. I was so on automatic pilot thinking, this 95 North will do all the work for me. Oh, no. Oh, and then once I was, I mean, I realized I was lost when I talked to you. And again, you know how he has a bridge phobia? He also has a lost phobia. The lost phobia is worse than the bridge phobia, I think. How can it be? How can anything be worse than pure fear? Because it's pure fear personified. Okay. You got it. Did you ever consider taking a train? Maybe taking a train back? He's got. To, he was. He went down there because he emptied out a storage thing. Was bringing it back to New York. Well, how about getting the stuff moved professionally by like a driver? Here's the problem. I'm, I'm, uh, he... Bri Bri offered to do it for him in his truck, but Fez turned him down. Because he wants to believe that he's an adult now. Well, I'd like to think that I'm human and that I could do the basicest, the simplest of human tasks. Did you just say basic? <laughs> the most basic. <laughs> yeah. All I could think is this. What if you had baby love with you? Lord knows when that baby would have got a chance to eat. Oh, when I had my meltdown yesterday, I said to my, and I had to pull over. Yeah. After I got lost number two time, the second time. I just had to pull over, and I just lost it. And I because from being lost, and I'm like, I cannot handle the simplest thing. I got no right whatsoever. Wait a minute, you pulled thinking. off the road and started crying like a woman. I started just no, it was it was crying, yeah, but it was mostly just like a hyperventilating thing. I don't impress you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the weird thing. You don't have to be at work for another 36 hours, right? Right. What do you give a fuck? Why not just drive around, take a Sunday drive, crank up some fucking rock, put the Beach Boys on, pop the top, you're on your way. I'm just thinking I'm going to be out here all night. I will so just what if you be were? out here all night. So what if you were? It doesn't matter. That's what you got to realize. It just doesn't matter. Oh, man, the freak out that I had. And then, just, and then it just took me a while, too, to get... 
going again to say, all right, now I have to go find this place. Did you ask in New York? York. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest fucking city in the country. This fucking place that you're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I did. I, and then I didn't want to call Ronnie again because... Why not? Because I had already bugged you like three times on the phone with this. And I'm like, and it's supposed to, this thing was supposed to be right in front of me. I mean, I knew I was there where I was supposed to find this 276 Bristol Bridge. Yeah. And just could not do it. Couldn't find it. Well, then, like, my, uh, I go, we haven't heard from him in a while. It must be good. My, my chick calls back maybe an hour and a half later. Oh. Right? Hey, how'd you make out? Coming up on it now. I look over at a map. I go, he went like eight miles in the last hour and a half. Yeah. He's fucking driving around like a maniac. In circles. And, and I, I Googled this to find out what your fear is called. And this retard mongoloid is the only <laughs> name for it. It's not the official name of the phobia. Why wouldn't one of those Friday Night Lights people come up with it? I'm sure they would have if I asked. But the night before... I think I'm capable. Were you drinking the night before? No, I didn't drink. Maybe that's your problem. I should have. At that point, a hangover wouldn't have made it any worse. How about just going to asking a gas station? Uh, Somebody. Okay, good point. He doesn't speak to strangers. (laughs) Good point. I take an exit thinking, all right, I can go find some place, just ask. Oh, that's the thing. I'm driving and driving off this exit. Now I'm thinking I won't be able to find 95. I start panicking again. I can't find any place. I bet it was 100 yards before the panic hit. (laughs) Oh, it wasn't far. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking all these turns because it looks like something will be down there. I'm like, I won't find my way back to 95. So that was like lost panic on top of lost panic. Maybe you're one of those old ladies that should just stay in their apartment. And then after six months, somebody smells something rotting. Driving Mr. Watley. No, we we know you're dead. I totally thought of that last night when I finally, finally got home. Just give in to agoraphobia? Exactly. I have no right to leave this place. What right. what right did I think I could have you know moved outside of this building? All right, I'm pointing this out to our own Dave. You saw what condition he was in when he was 16 minutes late for work. Yeah. Yes. You guys cannot let him wander around on a weekend without one of you guys could I, have uh, went taking a trip will, with him. I will drive with you next yeah. any fucking time you go. There will be a next time. <laughs> <laughs> I, there won't. And I'll do all the driving. I'll drive By down. By the way, there's a up. whole big a fucking point of this in Confederacy of Dunces. Just a fat <laughs> guy who refuses to travel. Ah, it started out so nice, too. Everything was just clicking. This, You know, the plane trip, I was very nice. I enjoyed that up and down. But no matter what, even, like, if you feel like, oh, it's not a big deal, glance at a map before you go somewhere so you can at least see what exits you're taking. So it's not a last second thing. Something guys do. Yeah. Just glance at the map. And I, I like to look at maps for no reason in case I ever tried to uh, uh, invade Cincinnati. I'm going to know what bridges <laughs> I'm going to take out. Then when I finally figure out which way I was going, I made it to that Bristol Bridge yeah. and went over that thing, which is not a long bridge, but it's really tall and really narrow. One of those old-fashioned wrought iron bridges. I Googled the image after I pointed it out to you. <laughs> And I said to my chick, I go, I don't, I don't know. It's not too big, but I bet he's going to struggle with it. They should call it the Bridge of Death. That <laughs> thing is the scariest. That's scarier. You than got a bridge Franklin. problem too? Yeah, I, I know. No, I, I hear you exactly. Because it everything. seems like you're blowing this bridge thing out of proportion. Well, no, I, I am with you on this one, Mr. W. I definitely feel your pain. I will drive next time. The only thing they should have named this bridge is rickety. That should, the rickety memorial bridge is the Bristol one. All I right, was let, on. let me point out something to both of you guys. Where's that bridge going? You never hear about bridges falling down. Uh, I heard about a bridge. I think the the Tappan Zee Bridge uh, had some construction difficulties. Yes, but it's still up. It's still up. They have a crack in the concrete, and the whole state worries about it. You never hear about one of these big bridges giving out. It's only a matter of time, though. I mean, the odds. But here's what you don't realize. When you're driving down 95, that's really a bridge anyway. That whole thing is up off the city. If there was water underneath you, you would think, wow, this is a long bridge. But the fact because it's ground, you're not getting the point. You're being held up like it's a bridge, you fucking morons. They just seem that they should have never been made, that human beings should not make yes, bridges. human br- beings should never cross a river. 
They should just stay on their no, side. No, the you can cross a river with a boat, but you shouldn't. Yeah, that it. won't take too much time. I am with you. Rem- imagine if everybody coming from Jersey to New York had to stop for a ferry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way they used to do it. Well, yeah, it's sure. They did Back it for the 1700s. Of- yeah, well, yeah, we, we, great. human beings have lived for 2,000 years. This, these bridges are a very new invention. And we've seen how many airplane so crashes. So are cars. Exactly. And how many car crashes are there? How so many airplane crashes? So you're afraid of cars now? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is bridges are a modern invention. And I'm with Fez. They will collapse someday. All of I'm them. Not worried. You're not helping him. And it's my own thing about the bridge. I don't worry about the bridge collapsing. My thing is that I will go quite mad, pass out, and drive off the side of it. <laughs> so what you're afraid of is yourself. I am afraid of myself. I'm afraid of the panic attack on the bridge. Uh, Lucy, you're on run of Fez. Yeah, completely so missed that one. Says they said, I, yeah, the other point of it, Lucy, is everyone has been lost in a car before, but we don't take it on as big as Fez does. Like, normally, I spend half my time lost, but it doesn't occur to me that I'll never get home. <laughs> I'm just mad at the situation for that moment. I don't think, well, what am I going to do for food? Where will I sleep tonight? I'm never getting back. That's exactly how I feel. That was a very nice summation there. Yeah. Well, it's not like it's your first time, so I've heard these complaints before. There's another problem, too, though, going from here down to D.C., and that is that there's so many 95s. There's 95, there's 195, 295, 495. I was like, what 95 are you, you know, trying to... Now, I've never gotten lost. Don't get me wrong, but I could see how it could happen. Yes, there's more than one road in, on the planet. But do they have to all end in 95, you know? Call yes, because they're connected with 95. Most of those um, those roads that you bring up keep you out of the cities most of the time. They should rename them. Lincoln, uh, Abraham Lincoln Thruway or something like that. What, what should they call it? Abraham Lincoln Thruway. Uh-huh. How's that going to help? I That's going to keep him from being lost? I still, I still wouldn't have taken the uh, Abraham Lincoln Thruway. Um, look, Magoo was fucking driving around blind, didn't know where he was going. Uh, Liam, Liam, you're on run of Fez. Yes, how you doing, guys? Good. I want to tell you, uh, you're talking about bridges that have never collapsed the Sunshine Skyway in St. Petersburg. Uh, Ron, you should actually remember, it collapsed many years back, and they just built a, a new one right next to it, which is the scariest bridge. All right, well, first of all, it didn't collapse. It was hit by a ship during a rainstorm. And that may be where Fez's bridge phobia came from, because Fez uh, lived uh, how close that bridge? Like oh, five miles? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a scary thing, and it, it used to be two spans, and the one span that was hit was still there. It was just stopped at the top, right? Well, then they, and it used to be one way each way. Then they made it a two-lane bridge over the whole mouth of a bay, and when you got to the very top of it, you had to see half a bridge, so that in your mind you could imagine what it must have felt like for those people to go off yeah. that span. Well, so that might have had something to do with it. Yeah, and that Skyway Bridge, I still to this day will not go over that. Well, that's a nice smooth bridge now. That one is its really a slow climb. It's nice. It's, it's a slow climb. It's really high. And the wide lanes, it's really super wide so that you really can't see over the side too much, like down to the water. So it's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing, but I still won't go over it. Well, what, what? Why would you just say three good things and then say that you had a problem? Because it's just it's too high, it's too long. So we used to live in like St. Pete, Clearwater. We would have a gig in Sarasota, which would take you, you know, half an hour, forty-five minutes. Fez would not drive over the bridge. He would drive around an entire bay, taking a four or five-hour trip each way so that he would not have to go over the, a bridge. Yeah, and, and like, if I was driving towards that bridge, I would, li- like, on the way back, um, headed north, I would come up to the sign where you could either go the long way around on the road or go over the bridge, 
And I would think in my mind, all right, today I can go over that bridge. Today I can go over that bridge, right up until that exit, and then stay on the road. I would not take it. Not this, not doing it at all. No. One I, time he actually had a hose. He was trying to suck the bridge dry and then go across it, just drive underneath. He didn't stand a chance. He did not stand a jam- chance. Uh, Tony, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys. Uh, I hate to – it's it's conspiracy, Fez, and I hate to say it, but Dave was kind of right. Uh, there's actually two 95s. When you follow 95, it takes you into Pennsylvania. But once you get into New Jersey and take the turnpike, that's also 95. Yeah, so, I – yeah. And everybody who lives and travels in the Northeast understands this. The thing is – Fez got to New York a couple years ago and hasn't really left New York. So he, I assume that when I said you take the Delaware Memorial Bridge into the Turnpike, and that would have done it for you. If you would have taken that turn, it would have worked perfectly. But I talked to you like you knew what I was talking about, and I guess you didn't. Um, and I thought I knew what you were talking about. Right. I absolutely thought I knew. I mean, in my mind, I'm going to get on 95 North heading out of D.C., and in my mind, I knew I had to get on the Jersey Turnpike eventually. I just never had a clue or never stopped, stopped to think, where do those two get together? You thought of it as like the Yellow Brick Road, where you just start following it, it'll take you straight to us. Right into Emerald City. That, that. And it's then you were even so supposed simple. to get a much earlier start than you did, and you were up all night, right? I was, yeah, we closed down the, the sports bar Thursdays there, doing Saturday Night Lights, and I'm like, all right. and I thought I was being good. I was like, you know, being good to myself where it's like, all right, don't make yourself get up at 5 a.m. and get things together for a 6 a.m. road trip. You know, sleep in a couple hours. I would have been perfect to get up early and go. And I didn't. Well, then you wouldn't have to deal with all the other traffic and all the stuff that was freaking you. Yeah. Then, I mean, it uh, would have been the right decision to make. But I think... Uh, but in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, sleep in an extra couple of hours, and I'm trying to tell myself it just doesn't matter then. No, every and decision, then it ended up mattering. Every decision you made was wrong. <laughs> every decision you made down the line turned out to be wrong. Hey, Jason, you're on Ron and Fuzz. Good morning, buddies. How are yeah. we doing? Good. Good. Fuzz, I just want to know about your level of meltdown. Was this worse than your Mikey D meltdown or about the same category or – I don't think it was as bad as my Mikey D meltdown because I didn't have anger involved in it. The the the, the, the one from getting lost yesterday. Yesterday was just pure panic attack running on fear. Damn. Was it worse than your meltdown when you were 16 minutes late for work? Uh, yes, it was worse than that one. Wow. And that's the one that made the flash cry, watching you cry. He... He was looking at you like a bad movie, and then he started sobbing. Flash would not have been uh, wanting to ride shotgun. Well, yeah, then yesterday. he could have pointed things out to you. Maybe if you had somebody riding shotgun. If you have a tendency to get lost, you should map quest a few alternate, uh, you know, directions home. Or get one of those GPS deals. Yeah, usually I try to get that in the rental car. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, like this van that I had rented didn't have it with it. It wasn't like an option that you could get with this thing. Mm. How big was the truck you were driving? It was like a minivan thing. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, instead of getting a rental here in the city, he got one all the way out in the airport. So you had to drive over the 69th Street Bridge, the Queensboro. Oh, yeah, yeah, the 59th, the 59th Street Bridge. Yeah. yeah, so I had to drive I, that. I still do the Escape from New York. Do you ever notice that? They call it the 69th Street Bridge. I do that all the time. So how was that for you? That, that was for, bad. Yeah. That was bad because I was like just by the time I got into Manhattan, it was so late. I was so worn out. And then this bridge is right in front of me. And I'm thinking, all right, I go over this bridge in the back of taxis all the time. Right. Driving it, completely different experience. And just thinking, all right, I'm going off the side of this thing. I am gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the guardrail and bounce right off the side of it. All right, now despite all the things that went wrong, do you feel anything good about having accomplished your goal though? No. <laughs> no, not whatsoever. Why not? And I Because thought- here, no matter what you thought or what went wrong, you got your ass from D C to New York with all your stuff, that's a good thing. All I feel is like I was stupid for trying. I should have left it all in that storage unit. 
Was it worth? I mean, the stuff that you first got. First of all, Kathleen from the Bronx took most of it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the patio. <laughs> Is the stuff that you brought? Was it? Was that worth going through this horror show? I mean, it was. I mean, I. Or was it just like a big rocking chair? Like, what did you bring back? <laughs> Let's face it. It's no one needs business. anything. <laughs> no one needs a goddamn thing. When you really look at your stuff in a trunk, it looks like shit. It, oh, might, it, feel, it might feel like great in your house, but when you see it in the back of a truck, you're like, throw a match back there. It's fucking hideous. I mean, all that stuff has sat in there for a year yeah. without me saying, oh, I needed that box <laughs> out of there. Oh, my gosh. Why did I leave that Virginia? Uh, Barney, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddy. Um, I've been listening to you guys for quite some time, and it, it all comes down to this. There is not one thing Fez does not have anxiety attacks about. He's afraid of fucking everything. I don't know if that helps. but and you, I disagree. Uh, there are... okay, name one thing, Fez. What aren't you afraid of? I am not afraid, my friend, of the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I can go to the dentist anytime I want. I choose not to. So you're saying there are things you don't have panic about. Right. But quite a bit that you do. Oh, yeah. There's plenty. Yeah. There's plenty there. But at least it's getting better as the years go by. Not really. Not mm. after yesterday's horrible display. I just think a lot of this has to do with two things, Fez. It's the fear of death that you have. Right. You need to get over that one, and I think everything else will fall through. Okay. And two, you got to learn not to give a shit about anything. Yeah. I'm, and I think, and just when I think I'm not giving a shit, yeah. is when I give the shit the most. The thing that I notice that you don't care about is your own fashion. That <laughs> is, you would think, a step in the right direction. You make Bill Murray look like he's well-dressed. I get a little slovenly, especially when it's so damn hot out. Sure. And I'm just looking for the easiest, coolest thing to put on. Why don't you go over to a dentist's office and let them know that you're not afraid of them? <laughs> I would scream that in their <laughs> lobby. What is this? It's nothing to me. Your drill sound doesn't bother me, my friend. So you actually have made up a list of the things that you're not afraid of. Dentist is on. Dentist is there. Yeah. That is about it. Yeah. So you're thinking now, if you would have had the baby, it would have even been worse. My point is... You would have always had to stay calm and collected for baby love. Because let's face it, the dad can't be pulling off the road, crying and hyperventilating in front of the children. I was That's a bad parent. I was thinking about it, and I'm thinking all I would do then, is, the only thing that would change is me still pulling off the road screaming, help me, help me and my baby, help my baby. <laughs> That's the only thing I think would have been different was the panic dialogue. Baby Love would have given him focus before his whole fucking thing. Baby Love actually would have helped you because you would have had everything meticulously researched and planned out. Way be and, and if there was a Baby Love, no, you would have not get lost. And the only thing now is I'm starting to think they're going to take that thing off you like Dakota Fanning from Sean Penn, where they're just going to say you can't do this. I am Sam. The thing I'm so pissed about today is that I didn't plan this trip. You know, that I didn't map quest. That it, I didn't... It's just unlike you, too. That's the weird thing. Yeah, because I, I always do that. I can't, I, you know what I did? I map quest because I couldn't remember where my storage unit was. From the airport where I picked up the rental van? Yeah. I map quest to my storage unit because I could not trust myself to remember where I left my belongings. It's not a bad thing. It's not, it's, I mean, you're acting like there's something wrong with it. Uh, you know, short-term memory, it happens. You have a lot of things to think of this is not unusual but why wasn't i meticulous enough to think oh wait i have to drive back to new york city why not check that i right, but here's what i'm trying to say uh, you, that obviously was a little bit of a screw up you got your bridge fear but you did it why can't you celebrate the fact that you got yourself 500 miles you ran through some difficulties you overcame them that's an adventure no one uh, you're not going to get to the end of like uh a film, you know, you're not going to be Lord of the Rings, and, and you're not going to have Frodo. I didn't even see this film. I'm going to try to figure it out. You're not going to have Frodo going, well, yeah, even though we got the rings, we still had all those problems, so it wasn't a good thing. You, you, uh, having adventure, Indiana Jones, you overcome, and that's what you did. You had a, a kind of a gay Indiana Jones adventure where you panicked, you broke down, but the fact of the matter is you did it. 
I was pissed at myself for get for getting lost because it was a stupid mistake on my part for getting lost. Um, I was pissed that I could, once you told me how to find my way back, right? That I couldn't find that way. Then I just felt like the retard of all retards. But I don't understand why you didn't even call back again. Why you wait uh, an hour goes by, so we finally go okay, everything's all right when we call you, thinking you're okay, but for an hour. You're going around like a fucking spinning top down there. Because I was, uh, because you told me where it was, and I was where I should have been. Yeah. But still couldn't find it. And my thought was, how is Ronnie going to be able to help me any more than that? But I would have fucking, you know, I would have stayed on the phone with you until we found it. It's impossible to get lost in the United States of America. <laughs> we are blanketing it with highways and byways. Everything's going to be fine. I watch it when I was... And they're going to put you in a nut. That's my only thing. At a certain point of this, of the daily I can't find myself, they're going to throw you in a nut hut. Even when I was on the right road after going over that Bristol Bridge to get to the New Jersey Turnpike, mm -hmm. I'm seeing signs for the New Jersey Turnpike, you know, and it, it was winding and twisting it right. before I could actually get on but it. But it runs right down the middle of the state. If you just start to head to the beach, <laughs> you are going to hit that. And I'm and I'm like so nervous then that all right it says straight ahead. What if I'm reading this wrong? And I'm you oh, know man. I'm going straight. The sign says straight. What if that's what if I'm still doing it wrong? Every, I'm lost on this. You, I don't even know how to you know explain. What I mean? No. Did you eat at all? <laughs> did you know? Did you have that's a good point? Something to drink. Did some you medication. Have protein. I did not eat all day. Oh. All right. So that's another oh. huge mistake. I couldn't. I was puking. But you've got to have. Protein in your body to think right. Another thing that you do all the time, you fuck up your blood sugar. And that keeps you from thinking properly. Yeah, I didn't have anything to eat since uh, Saturday night before. So, I mean, this is a plethora of things that you did wrong and didn't plan properly. You know if you got a trip, you got to have some protein first thing in the morning. You should have some uh, bars in the car. You should have protein bars, piece of fruit. Something that is going to keep your blood sugar okay. Would have you have fed baby love during the trip? No, he wouldn't have. Because if you would have fed baby love, you, should, you owe it to yourself to feed yourself. That's the point. What are you, a fucking a therapist now? I've been watching some Dr. Phil. Well, it's not working for you. Yeah, it was just bad. I mean, the later I got, I'm like, well, first of all, I wasn't even hungry. My stomach was so freaking upset. I'm not saying that you should be hungry. You need this to make your brain work properly. It's the same as putting gas in the car. You have to have some protein or you get fucking nuts. And then it was like getting later and later, and I'm like, well, I can't stop and get something now. When I drove Why? up. Why? You weren't do anywhere. <laughs> you were not fucking do anywhere. And I've told you before, we have the type of bosses who will say, sure, boys, go ahead. Take <laughs> off today tomorrow. They are always cool about that. And Wiki lives down there. You could have called him, and he would have fucking rode back with you. You have a lot of people that would have been there. Everybody's been lost before. It's not anything. It's not, It's just part of life. It's not a big deal. I just hate it more than anyone does. Then that's something you can control. You can control your reaction. You can't control not being lost. Everybody has done it. Everybody has ended up hundreds of miles away. One time I, I pulled off the road, like, and I'm in the middle of Florida, right? I pull off the road, like, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I thought I could make it all the way back. I'm tired. So I wake up in the morning, piss, look, I fucking wasted money on the hotel. I only slept four hours. I just hop up, drive across the state. Now I'm driving for, like, three hours. And I what's that lake in the middle of the... Lake Okeechobee? I pull up to it, right? And I go, fuck, there's no way around this. Jesus Christ, this is a huge lake. I go, no fucking lake could be this big. I start looking around. I see a sign that says Vero Beach. I am fucking sitting on the other side of the state, staring at the Atlantic Ocean, in my mind, trying to let on, God, this is a big lake. Instead of going, you could be lost. It happens to everyone. You don't fucking pull off the road and panic or get upset about it. doesn't matter. Remember when I got lost for two hours going to get that pizza? When we first moved to Northern Virginia? Yeah. Oh, God, that was brutal. That that might have been the one thing that got me on, you know, being afraid of being lost. Yeah. 
That it, may have been the catalyst on that one. One good tip for when you're getting lost is you just explore where you're lost a little bit. Check you, it you, out. You go to the local diner right. or to the local convenience store. You make fun of them in the car when you're leaving. You know, you, you do have a little mini Hunter S. Thompson thing. He, he's got a good point there, Fez, is that you stay part of your environment. Like a lot of people go on a Sunday drive. They don't know exactly where they're going or where they're going to come out, and they enjoy it. They're insane. You were on a Sunday drive with all your stuff in a van. That's all. Uh, and some bridges from time to time. Hey, uh, Mike. Mike, you're on a Fez. Hey, Ronnie. He really is uh, Ignatius Riley. I think his pyloric valve just sealed shut. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I'm, I'm a comedian, and I, and I had a feature mm. with me once. That, that I actually did your room uh, twice, so nice place. Thank you. Miss it badly. <laughs> but uh, he, he kept going over 40 minutes every time in the beginning, so I knew he had this horrible fear of bridges, and I took him across this one because he had to drive with me. One of those all-metal ones with the metal floors. Yeah. And then your car just shakes and vibrates on. I stopped the car dead in the center, and this kid went into an apoplectic fit. He started crying, foaming at the mouth, and I said, you know, you got a, you got a choice. Either you do your 30 minutes or you get out of the car right now. And this kid just begged me. He was crying his eyes on And the next night, yeah, 29 minutes, 50 seconds, he's off stage. Sometimes right. you got to use that to work. All right, thank you very much, Mike. What are you saying, Fez, is that you can do this. You can force yourself to do this. Ah, well, I forced myself over the bridges yesterday. Mm. Not in the best of fashion. Not in the most graceful of terms. Who but Who cares? There's nobody keeping score but you, bro. You could have fucking actually told the rest of us. Hey, I came back from D.C. in three and a half hours. <laughs> Brand new record. We'd all go, woo, nice time. No one gives a shit. It's all up to you. This is your movie. You're directing it. You're producing it. You figure out how you want the hero to be. I don't know. I don't think I want the hero in my movie to be screaming and crying because he's lost. I think I want him to go on adventures. You know, uh, why don't you try getting lost? I'll, I'll be happy to accompany you. But try getting lost. Take a drive up to Long Island and just get lost for a couple hours and then come on back. It's hard to get lost on Long Island. There's one fucking road. You can see the water from either side. <laughs> or South Jersey. <laughs> something. It's really fuzzy. There's so many highways and they, everything connects. You could drive from here to Alaska to someone's house. It's really amazing when you think about it. You're fucking connected by concrete. No matter where you want to go. You want to go to Mexico City, you're completely connected by concrete. It's crazy when you think about it. That is very weird. One of the bad things after my freak out yesterday was even when I was going the right way, yeah. it just didn't seem like the right way. There was that, you know, second guessing and third guessing and everything. Right. Where it was like, all right, I know I'm going the right direction, but how am I going to screw this up next? And what if this direction that I think is the right direction isn't the right direction? Right. Okay. I mean, again, that's all in your head. That's all. You do it. You're in charge of that. That's uh, Yeah, that's the problem. Once I get to the pitch, it's hard to unpitch and come back down to where things appear normal again. One thing to do is not give a fuck. That's one place that you got to be. I don't give a shit what time I get there. You set up this little thing that you got to be somewhere at a certain time. I know you have this thing like like your mom's that don't wait for you that you got to be home by dark all the time. He's always telling me, oh, I want to get home before it's dark. Oh, I totally want to get home before it was dark. I'm like, there's no vampires. You're fucking completely safe. <laughs> yeah, if it if it had gone on longer and it gotten completely dark out there, yeah, I'd still be sitting on the side of the road, I think, at that point. Well, it's not true. Uh, here's uh, Robert. Robert, you're on Manifest. Yeah, guys, uh, I don't know if this hurts or helps, but I, I read in USA Today that 75% of the bridges in the U.S. are in disrepair, so... I don't know if that helps Fez or hurts him, man. I don't think it helps, but thank you. doesn't help at all. I'm sure 75% of the roads are in disrepair. It's not a big deal. But a road's not going to fall 200 feet. Why not? And you will die. Why not? You Most of the time, you're 200 feet off the ground when you're on a major highway. I guarantee you. Yeah. Well, I'm just used to the Jersey, uh, you know, the, term, uh, the, the Garden State Parkway isn't Elevated. The turnpike anyway. is a lot of places. Yeah, the turnpike is. So that's Funny. a bridge. It's just so weird to think of it like that. You need to. to expand your bridge phobia until it's everything. <laughs> what? That doesn't help. <laughs> I want this to become a highway phobia for you. 
Take it down the sidewalk. I didn't know you had a bridge phobia, though. Yeah, I do. I think, I think it's common. That's why I knew that stat yeah. about the Ben Franklin Bridge. Well, see, that's the thing. I don't think anyone likes, hey, I'm going to travel over the bridge now, but, you know, you do it. Yeah, at your own peril, though. That's the point. <laughs> yes. You leave the house at your own peril. I'm telling you, we're going to hear very soon on the news a bridge collapsing and hundreds die, and then I'll get the last laugh on that one. <laughs> yes. Funny. <laughs> You'll be laughing all the way to the nut hut, you fucking freak. Here's uh, Tony. Tony, you're on my Fez. I just wanted to let Fez know as a uh, fellow heart patient, uh, I'm currently lost, but I uh, popped a Xanax about 40 minutes ago, and I don't really care. This is some beautiful country, and I see a sign for the road I was looking for right ahead. So Maybe the reason why you're lost is because you popped a Xanax. Sedatives. No, 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 I popped the Xanax after I was lost because I was agitated. Hey, doesn't that make you feel good uh, while you're driving around knowing that other people are eating Xanax as they're driving? As That's their uh, road food, chocolate-covered Xanax. Why don't you have some Xanax for yourself, Fez, when you get in this pitch? Um, well, I don't think I would have taken it while I was driving anyway. But uh, some Xanax would be nice to have on hand for, like, like the 60-minute uh, late day. That would have been a perfect example for a Xanax day. Oh, you're being written up, and it's going into your permanent file. What? That went in the permanent file. Don't even don't even care about it. Just something that's looked at from time to time by the government. Now I have to get that file back. Or find some way to make it up. Well, it's permanent. It's permanent. You can have half a Xanax if you're driving, I think. Yeah, sure, if you don't want to get off. I say do four and uh, hit two <laughs> tall boys with it. Tall boy chaser. It's the only way to deal. Then just start cruising the USA. Uh, crush them up, put it on your eyelids, so when you're driving around, it just slowly dissolves in. Gives you a nice little rush. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You know a lot about that. So was so was it, what's your fucking point? You no. Know, wearing a wire? I just never heard that before. I'm telling you. Can you imagine this fucking guy coming in your apartment at 3 o'clock in the morning? The screams cop. You might as well be wearing a fucking badge. I ain't no narc. That's because they don't work with the stupid. <laughs> if they did, you'd be fine. <laughs> We'll be right back.